What I wanted to do in this video is just compile a whole bunch of turkey recipes all into one condensed searchable video. Now to make sure you can get around this video and go straight to any video that you want to watch, any recipe you want to watch, I've indexed the whole thing. You have timestamps along the bottom of your screen right there. Also, if you go into the description, you'll see a list of all of the recipes that are included in this video with timestamps where you can click on it and go straight to that video. I hope that you'll not only find everything you need in this video, but I hope you'll save it and be able to use it over and over again. Elevator. The absolute most important step to creating the juiciest, most tender, crispy skin turkey on the grill is the dry brine. You're gonna need to buy your turkey early enough so that you have two to three days to thaw it out in the fridge and then another three days for the dry brine. All you have to do is rinse your turkey off, dry it up real good, put it on a pan or something where you can catch the excess uh, kosher salt as it falls off but you need kosher salt don't substitute anything else use kosher salt and just sprinkle it over your turkey you don't even have to use a lot sprinkle it over your turkey and put it in the fridge and let it go for at least three days and take it out put it on the grill i'll show you the rest let's get into this cook man let's go all right guys it's about to go down I'm about to do my first ever turkey. Here's my setup, holes banked to one side. I have about 15 briquettes here. And what I'm going to do is add these briquettes over here in the corner and they'll ignite the rest of the coals and it will burn slowly across. That's gonna help me maintain the temperature that I want. What I'm looking for is a temperature between three, anywhere from 325, 350, all the way up past the 375. So let's put these on. Put my uh, top grate on, grab my wood. Um, right now, I'm getting ready to start injecting this bird. And this recipe, let me tell you what I got. One cup of water, one cup of lemon juice, one stick of butter, 25 shakes of your favorite hot sauce. I dry brine this for three days. All of my research says that you leave the dry brine on there. You don't have to wash it off. If you wash it off, you kind of defeat the purpose of doing it in the first place. So the dry brine is still on there, but I am going to add a rub over the top of that. Right now, what I need to do is set up my uh, grill probe. Right, so I stick that in there, and then just wait for the temperature to come up. As you can see, it's 102 in there. And from there, I'll just leave this right here. And then I have a wireless transmitter that I can keep with me in the house. This is going to transmit the temperature in the grill to that wireless thing so I don't have to keep coming out here. And again, I'm going to leave both vents open. And then when it starts to get into where I need it to be, if it doesn't level out on its own, I will start to make adjustments on these vents. I've added a drip pan right here on the opposite side of where the coals are and my turkey will sit right there. I will be monitoring it with this. I have another grill probe. This short one here will actually go into the turkey breast and I'll be able to monitor it. I'm going to cook it, cook it until the temperature inside the turkey breast is at least 165. Some of the guys are taking it up to 175. All right guys, so the last step for me is to apply a rub. This is what I'm going to choose. I just bought it at the store right off the thing. I don't usually make my own rubs, but I checked the ingredient list and salt is kind of way down the list on it. Brown sugar is the first ingredient, which I like. When you're doing a dry brine or any kind of brine, you have to be worried about how much more salt you add because salt is already in the brine. A lot of turkeys come already brined, so there's salt there. So you have to be concerned about how much more salt you add to your seasoning. But uh, I tasted this and I think it's gonna be all right. So let's go over here and just rub it down.
I'm gonna go ahead and put the turkey on now while I'm already out here messing with the lid. It was already at 315, so it'll get up to temp, but I want the turkey already on there so that when it does get up to temp, I don't have to take the lid off again. And it's getting some smoke. I just put my temperature probe in the thickest part of the breast meat. I'm going to plug it, plug the other end into my transmitter here, and then we'll be, we'll be ready to go. All right guys, I'm coming out to check on my grill. I like what I'm seeing already just from the smoke. It's thin and it's blue. My temps are running about where I want them. The meat is showing at 165. I'm gonna take it up to 175. Let's see what we got here. I love the color. I can tell that the skin is getting crispy. The baby's already almost done. Look at the legs. Look at the meat pulling back on the drumsticks there. I don't think he got very long at all. So I'm gonna let this go until it hits 175. It's at what? 166 right now. People, this bad boy is ready. It's tipping over 175 everywhere. I got juices running in the cavity. The skin is nice and tight and crisp. The color is good. I'm not mad about it for my first try. But the uh, final test remains to be seen when we take it in here and after we let it rest for at least a half an hour, get that first taste test. All right, let's take it off. All right, y'all. My first turkey is done. This is my beautiful wife, Sarah. And we're gonna taste test this thing together. Now, what I see the car pros do is they cut right down on the turkey breast like that, and then they cut across. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's gonna be dry anywhere, it's gonna be dry right here. So we're gonna take a piece of this and cut it off. Can you see that? There's a piece for you. There's a piece for me, here we go. Juicy. Mm. It is. It's juicy and flavorful. It's definitely not dry. If it's gonna be dry anywhere, it's gonna be dry right here in the turkey brush. I can see my injection in there, the flavors that I put in there. This is very good. I can definitely do this. If yeah. the breast tastes this good, then I know I know the legs and the drumsticks are gonna be really good. It's very flavorful. It's real good. Mm -hmm. You taste it in the meat, in the skin there. Yeah, that's the crispiness. Skin is very good. Not bad for my first try, but I think it's only gonna get better from there, baby. Mm, very good. Good job, babe. All right. Good. <laughs> There are two reasons you might want to consider butterflying a turkey. Now in grilling and smoking circles, we tend to use another term called spatchcocking. I don't know who came up with that word, but I don't like saying it as a man, especially in reference to things that I'm going to be putting into my mouth. Now, there are two reasons, like I said. Number one is if you're planning on doing a pretty big turkey, but you got a pretty small grill. Weber kettle is what I use, as you know. Depending on how big the bird is, you might run into problems where the bird doesn't clear the lid very well. Butterflying it is the way to go. Now the other reason is maybe you tried a whole turkey and it didn't quite all get done at the same time. This actually happened to me on my first one. A whole turkey is like a big globe of meat. So the top part when you're cooking it tends to get done better, faster than the area down by the thigh and the wing and stuff like that. So when you butterfly a bird, it lays flat. Everything, all of the skin is exposed. Everything is exposed flat. So it's it's going to cook more evenly and it's going to cook quicker. I did it. I'm not going to show you the cook. I'm just going to show you the reveal. The cook is exactly the same as cooking a whole turkey, which you can find in this link right here. So let's get into this. It's a very quick video. I'm just going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you the reveal and then you can make a decision on whether or not you'd like to do your turkey this way. Now, the first thing is to turn the turkey over so that the back bone is exposed. The easiest way to do this is with a pair of professional shears. Poultry shears is what they call them. I don't happen to have any handy, so I'm gonna use this boning knife here. And I'm gonna cut this off first. 
cut right down the side of the backbone. So we'll see how this works. I don't have the right equipment, but we'll see how it goes. Some of the videos said to take a nice knife, nice sharp knife. This is a pretty sharp knife, it's brand new. And just kind of score down that bone right there. Make a little incision and turn it over. Turn the legs out like that just as if you were doing some chest compressions. You put your weight on it and press down to crack the bone. Presentation wise, I'll take the legs and fold them in like that. And then I will cut off all of the excess skin Clean it up a little bit. This is it, y'all. I'm, I'm having a, <laughs> a little trouble getting used to looking at it like this. I don't know. It just looks like a, something you ought to see in some kind of poultry porn magazine or something. The centerfold or something, you know. <laughs> it's just kind of, it looks kind of freaky. <laughs> I don't know. If I, think, I think if I had like a five-year-old and he walked in here on me messing around and massaging this thing like this, I'd be like, what you doing? Get out of here, son. What are you doing out? Get, go to your room. <laughs> So this is my grill setup. This is about 10 to 15 coals. I'm gonna put them in the middle so that they burn down and out. That's gonna give me a consistent temperature for at least a couple of hours. So while the grill is coming up to temp, it's time to turn our attention to this whole turkey breast. Get inside and get it all prepped up. Now I have already done a three day dry brine on this turkey breast. A dry brine is basically where you take kosher salt, sprinkle it lightly all over the bird. Now. We're talking about the same way you would season your food if you were putting some salt on, a, on, on your meat. But you sprinkle it lightly all over the bird and then you put it in the fridge uncovered and let it sit there for three days and let that brine work its magic. I just pulled it out of the fridge. Look at the skin, see how tight it is, see how it's kind of translucent. That dry brine changes the skin, the salt penetrates the meat, changes the fibers, it's, it's, it's amazing. That's all I can say, man. I'm going to do an injection with some Tony Saturies and then we'll be ready to put this thing on the grill.
in the range that I want it to be now. So I'm gonna put this pan in here, fill it with hot water. That's gonna help regulate the temperatures. It acts as a heat sink. It also keeps the environment inside of there moist. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then close down the top there just a little bit so we can regulate this temperature. I don't want it to shoot past the uh, range that I want it to be in. Play the waiting game again. We gotta wait till everything gets back up to temperature. But the good news is I don't have any more reasons to open up this lid until it's time to put that turkey on. And again, that's between 275 and 300. top thermometer is the temperature inside of the meat and the bottom is the temperature inside of the grill. We gonna watch this one right here because when it gets to 165, or actually right before 165, I'm gonna come out here and pull this thing off. All right, now we just wait. I just came out here and this bird is looking real, real good. And it's up to temp. It's time to take this thing off, man. Let's get it. So to get our wings crispy, we're gonna be dredging them in a dry batter consisting of flour and baking powder. Now you're gonna to wanna to have equal amounts of each. So make sure you keep up with how much flour you put in there because you're gonna to wanna to put an equal amount of baking powder in there. Next, you're going to want to toss, like I said, dredge your wings, all of your wing sections in that baking powder and flour mixture and then just set them aside while you get the grill ready. All right, y'all, the coals are ready. So let's get these coals dumped. Here we go. We're just going to divide these coals evenly between the two baskets. A couple of them came out. Woo, it's hot in there. No way these ain't getting crispy, bruh. Put these on very carefully. I'm going to add some, some wood chunks to both sides. Put a couple of pieces on this side. Put some on the other side as well. If I can get them to stay on top of the coal. Now let's put the lid on. Let these get, let this grate get nice and hot while I go get the uh, turkey wings.
I think I'm gonna come out here maybe every 10 minutes or so and just rotate this lid a little bit so I can make sure that everybody's getting the same amount of smoke. about this cook today man because we grilling up some turkey thighs here's what we're gonna do man 30 minute brine and baking soda and water we're gonna take them off we're gonna put them on the grill we're gonna run them hot i'm looking for the skin to be crispy i'm looking for the turkey to be juicy so enjoy some music to vibe to and let's get it going elevator, elevator.
that's it, baby. That's where I wanted to be, right there. I have one goal with this video and that is to provide the turkey leg eating public at large with at least one other way to enjoy a turkey leg besides smoking it. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I did was make a brine. So I have about 10 cups of water in this bowl and we're gonna add the baking soda at a rate of one tablespoon per cup of water. Then we're just gonna add about a half a cup to a cup of the kosher salt get that all stirred up. Now one thing you want to keep in mind when you're using baking soda is that it's not going to let that water clear up. It's still going to look cloudy, but that doesn't mean that everything is not incorporated. So just be aware of that. Now for this recipe, I decided to remove the skin off my turkey legs and replace it with bacon. I thought it would be cool, add more flavor. So that's what we're going to do in this step. One by one, while I got the skin off, I'm also going to cut out some of these tendons and stuff like that. That's one of the things that I kind of don't like about eating turk legs. You encounter so much stuff when you take a bite. So it's easy to see that stuff with the skin off. So I'm gonna just run my knife right underneath the tendons and stuff like that and cut out as much of that as I can. Now let's get the real setup for a hot and fast indirect cooking. I'm gonna pile a chimney full of unlit coals on one side, uh, and then I'll light 10 to 15 briquettes and pour them on the top of my unlit coals right in the center. This is gonna cause those coals to burn slowly down and out, which will give us a consistent temperature over a long period of time. So now it's time to prep these turkey legs. All right, so I already took them out of the brine and I dried them off, and now, we just want to get some seasoning on it. And I'm just going to be seasoning these up with a nice coating of bone sucking sauce, just making sure to get it on all sides. Once I got done with that, I wrapped each one of these uh, turkey legs in bacon. I did that off camera. Then I seasoned the bacon with this honey garlic rub from uh, Weber. Very good stuff. So all that's left to do now is just put these babies on the grill. My grill is running nice and hot. It's somewhere between 350 to 400 degrees. That's exactly where I want them. And I'm just gonna lay them down on the grill in a straight line with the thickest part facing the heat. We'll let them go for about a half an hour and then we'll come out here and check on them. 
So it's been about 30 minutes now and my turkey legs are starting to look good, man. The bacon is starting to take on some color and I'm liking the overall pace that they're cooking at. So I'm just gonna go ahead and flip them, make sure that they're getting the same color on all sides so they look good in the presentation. And we'll check back in another 30 minutes. Let's do another temperature check. It's been about another half an hour or so. Let's see where we at. We should be pretty close to done if we're not already. Oh yeah, baby. These bad boys are done and they look amazing. It's time to pull these babies off the grill. That one almost looks like a turkey lollipop. So long story short, man, these things came out amazing. Like I'm not even exaggerating, man. They were so good. They were so juicy and so much more flavor. They still had a few tendons. You know, you can't you can't get them all out, man. You'll you'll have to tear up the meat and everything to try to get them all out. But just cutting out a few of them just made the whole bite, the whole experience of eating a turkey leg more enjoyable for me. So I hope you found this video useful, man. If you did, the most important thing you can do to help me get it in front of more people is to just hit that like button man it only takes a second it's free but it really 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 helps a video get out there all right we'll see you next time on run on the grill Today I'm going to be doing butterfly turkey legs, man. I already did a short dry brine on these turkey legs for about three hours. Now, time to go ahead and start butterflying these things. And it goes the same way it does with chicken legs. You're just gonna cut down the center and then slowly start to open them up by cutting down the sides of the bone. You also wanna make sure that you don't cut too far because you want the meat to stay attached to the bone. You just wanna kinda lay it open like a butterfly. <laughs> While I got them open and wide and flat like this, it's the perfect time to go ahead and cut out some of these tendons. As you know, turkey legs have all kinds of tendons and bones that you gotta deal with, and having them laid open like this is the perfect time to start cutting some of that stuff out. You're never gonna get them all, but you're gonna get enough that it's gonna make a big difference in the bite when you take a bite of that turkey leg. So I got all of the tendons out that I'm gonna get out without tearing my turkey legs up. And now it's time to go ahead and season them. I'm gonna be using this Chupacabra rub by Two Gringos. Very nice rub, man. It's got a nice little kick to it. It's great on wings, but on this turkey leg, man, with the barbecue sauce that I'm gonna be putting on it later, fantastic. All right, out here on the grill, you can see two zones set up, hot and fast. I got a whole chimney full of hot charcoal on one side of the grill. I'm gonna be putting the meat on the other side.
I'm not going to be smoking these. I'm going to be going hot and fast, but I am going to put some chunks on top of the grate just for a little smoke seasoning. I do that when I'm grilling something, but I just want a little smoke flavor on it. Uh, I find that putting them on top of the grate like that, they just kind of smolder really slow. They never really get that heavy smoke that you get when you put them directly on top of the coal. So it makes for a nice, even little undertone of smoke that's more like a seasoning. My turkey legs have been out here for about 20 minutes, close to a half an hour. So let's get a check, see how they're doing, get a temperature check. turn these around so the ones that have not had the big end close to the heat will uh, will have some time close to the heat. We'll just keep going. I'm gonna give them about another 10-15 minutes to make sure that the internal temperature is right around 175, which is where I want them to be. And then I think I'm just gonna move the uh, wood out of the way and start searing them directly over the uh, coals on both sides. Time to take these babies off and man, they are looking good. Wait till you see them. All right, so that's about it, man. You can see, very, very easy cook. Now, if you are a barbecue channel creator, you have a barbecue channel, I got a little challenge for you and I'm calling it the Not Smoke Turkey Leg Challenge. The challenge is to cook some turkey legs on the grill, man, but without smoking them. You can add, you can use smoke as a, as a seasoning like I did in this video. But the challenge is to come up with some recipes for turkey legs that are not the same old smoked turkey leg that's all we ever see. If you decide to take this challenge, I want you to post the video on your channel, use the hashtag not smoked turkey legs, and then tag me in it. Can't wait to see what everybody does. It's Ron on the grill, man. So I'm gonna be doing a turkey leg hut inspired cook today. I'm gonna to be using pre-smoked turkey legs and I'm gonna tell you right now that it was the best decision I have ever made. Let's get into it. To maintain this grill at about 300 degrees, first we're gonna use about 10 starter coals here and I'm gonna put those in top on the top of that bank of coals. Definitely gonna last me a couple of hours. We'll see where it looks like after that. So I'm just gonna pour these right on top. Then I'm going to adjust these bottom vents down about halfway. Put the lid on. 
open that wide open and then we're just going to monitor this temp once it starts getting close to about 300 then we'll start closing things down these are the turkey legs i'm going to be using you can see by the color of the skin that they are smoked well another thing that'll tell you how well smoked they are is the pink color of the meat these are fully cooked turkey legs they are ready to go you could bite into them right now and they would be just fine so there's one or two ways you're going to be eating a turkey leg man either you're going to be doing a caveman style where you holding it in your hand and just taking bites to the head or it's going to be a stuffed turkey leg kind of thing where it's a big plate of meat topped with a bunch of other stuff and you're going to be eating it with a fork if you're going to be doing it like that then you want this thing to be falling off the bone and that's what we're going for today now if you walk around the state fair eating a turkey leg you don't want it fall off the bone tender so that is the difference now the way to get turkey legs super super fall off the bone tender is wrap it in foil and let it go that's what we're gonna do right now now these are already smoked but they don't have any seasoning so we're gonna put some seasoning on it right now All right, so my turkey legs are on and I'm not even coming back out here to check on them again for at least two hours because some people are saying it's going to take about four. Now, I don't cook the time, I cook the temperature. It's very important to understand that the person that's giving you a time is cooking on the different appliance that you're going to be cooking on. His may run hot, his may run cool, so times are only estimates. You must not cook to time, you must cook to temperature and feel. Two hours from now, I'm going to come out here and I'm going to check and I'm going to see where it's at. I'm going to check for tenderness and that's going to tell me a lot because they're already done. Remember that. So I'm going to go in here and chill for about an hour and then I'm going to start making this macaroni and cheese that's going to go on top of these turkey legs. It's only been just over two hours, but I came out here and did a little squeeze test a few minutes ago, and I know in my heart that these babies are fall off the bone tender. So I'm gonna go ahead on and pull them. 